Hey there, drone fans. Today is an incredibly exciting day because DJI just announced the brand new DJI Air 3S drone. So I'm smiling ear to ear and I am absolutely giddy with excitement because I love testing new technology like this. And one of the main reasons I'm so excited is because the Air 3S is the latest release from DJI in what I'll call their mid-sized drone category. So the drone is bigger than the Mini, smaller than the Mavic, but it fits right in that Goldilocks zone where hobbyists and consumers can use it and professionals can use it. So if you've never flown before or you're looking for an upgrade as a consumer, this drone has everything you're gonna want. It's got artificial intelligence, it's got safety features like return to home and crash avoidance, 360 degrees of crash avoidance, including LiDAR out the front. It records incredible footage. It'll record 4K at up to 120 frames per second. It takes amazing pictures. It's got a 50 megapixel camera in it. It also has a long flight time, 45 minutes keep it up in the air on a single battery. It can fly really far, 20 kilometers. It's got dual lenses in there, so you've got a telephoto and a wide angle. It's got everything you're gonna want. Now, if you're a professional, even more important, you can use this for all the jobs you're out there doing, so you can capture some incredibly good footage and send it to your clients. So it kind of fits right in that prosumer category, where again, it's bigger than a Mini, so it can fly in stronger winds, it can fly further and fly longer. It's not as big as a Mavic, which tends to be a little bit more money and a little bit more, I don't know, complicated to fly in a lot of ways, so it's really, right in the middle, which is where I like to fly. So as part of today's video, I'm gonna do a quick unboxing just to show you everything that's included with the Fly More combination. And as I go through the unboxing, I'll explain the components, how they work, how you'll use them, and maybe what's different from other versions that DJI's released. But I also wanna point out why this drone is so important because for me, I've been waiting a long time for this release, and I really think this is the drone to watch for quite some time. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time today, and then I'll go into it in more detail in other reviews. But I'm talking too much. I wanna get inside the box, charge it up, and get outside, and start flying it, because that's why we have the drone. All right, so I've got, a, I've got a slicer right here. I use it every time I like this. It's, uh, it's composite, so it's not a blade. You're not gonna cut your fingers. Let me open up the box. Let's get this wrapping off. This just showed up, and I haven't had a chance to unbox it yet, and I, I'm trying to be patient, but enough's enough. Let's get in the box. All right, here we go. All right, let's get rid of the cellophane here. All right, there's a strip along the back here. Let me cut that open. Oh, man, every time a new drone shows up, <laughs> it's like Christmas and my birthday and, and a holiday. It's all wrapped up in one. All right, so there's the drone. This is the Flymore combination, by the way, which includes the RC2 controller and the drone. Now, I understand if you use the standard controller, it's the new RCN3 controller because it's using OcuSync 4. Sorry, a little detail there. All right, so inside there, right away, you can see it's got a really nice carry bag. Let me get it out. Be a little rough with it, Rick. There, take it easy. <laughs> All right, all right. So I always say this, but boy, isn't it nice that they give you a bag with the Flymore combination because the bag not only protects your gear, but it keeps everything organized. Because when you go out in the field, there's a lot of stuff you gotta bring along. Having a bag like this means everything's in the bag. So when you head out for the day, you know you've got everything with you. If you don't have a carry bag like this, you got the drone, you've got the controller, you got some batteries, you got some cables, you're gonna forget something, I promise you. So having the bag protects it and it keeps it organized, which I like a lot. And it's a heavy duty bag. It's got like a nylon exterior to it. So don't fear it. You're gonna be able to use this. Nice little strap in the back here where you can carry it. It's got a shoulder strap as well. So it's got everything you need. And on the front, there's a little buckle right here. You just basically pull down and unsnap that and it opens up. <laughs> Let's see what's inside. All right, in the top of it, there's a bunch of manuals. So let me get those out of there because I always miss that top flap there. What else is in there? Uh oh, a couple of desiccants. I always talk about these desiccants, make sure you get rid of them, or if you're gonna keep them, put them in a Ziploc bag, put it on top of your refrigerator so kids can't get at it because this is dangerous stuff and they're gonna, they're gonna wanna eat it. You don't want them eating the desiccant, but it is really good if you've got something you've dropped in water, you can put a Ziploc bag with a bunch of these in that bag with that component and it'll actually absorb that moisture. So maybe you wanna keep them, but if you're not gonna keep them in a safe place, chuck them. All right, so I'm gonna chuck those guys. All right, what else is up there? Nothing else, okay. So on that top flap, it looks like a ton of manuals. Oh, here we go with the bags again. <laughs> These bags have gotten a lot more impenetrable. All right, there we go, opened up right away. Not a big deal. All right, so a ton of manuals. And I say every time, oh, some DJI stuff there. There's a manual, that's the uh, quick start guide. What else have we got in here? Uh, information notice, so that, read through that, make sure you get all the details there. Safety guide and an accessories guide. And then there's also uh, some downloading software for the DJI store if you wanna visit the store and download some other stuff from there and check out the accessories. All right, so a ton of manuals. Always read through those manuals. And again, I always say it's a boring exercise, I get it but you'll find some time. Sit down with a cup of coffee, read through them, spend five minutes. You're gonna find out things about the drone that aren't naturally intuitive. Now you can watch videos, of course, and figure it out that way, but I find that reading through the manuals invariably 
there's one or two features that I didn't know about. And when I read the manual, I'm like, wow, that's how that works. Okay, that was good they put a manual in there. Okay, also included as a charging cable. It's an incredibly short charging cable, but it's a USB-C to USB-C, which allows you to charge the drone and charge the batteries. Let's get inside here and look at the good stuff. All right, so what do we got up top? Oh, another bag of accessories. Looks like, ooh, filters, isn't that nice? What else have we got? Let's see, controller. Okay, good, good. What's over here? Ooh, charger, look at that. There's the charging hub and here's the drone. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna save the drone to last. Now, one thing I've noticed is they've changed the bags a little bit. This bag looks a little bit more uh, compartmentalized than bags that they've had in the past. So there's plenty of room in here for the charger up here, the charging hub, down here's where the controller goes and the drone fits in here and there's actually a form piece of foam in the front of it that will hold the nose nice and tight inside the bag. That was one thing I always worry about with the looser bags, like if you're using a backpack and you throw everything in the backpack, it's gonna be clanging together and you're gonna bang things up. So having different compartments is a really nice thing. Did I miss anything else? I always miss something and people say, Rick, you missed the thing, get in there. Nope, nothing else. Okay, so there's the bag. And again, boy, I like the fact that they include a bag. All right, let's start with the stuff that isn't quite interesting as some of the other stuff. Uh, let, let's start with the charging hub because that should look a lot like what the Air 3 charging hub looked like, I'm hoping. I'm also hoping the batteries are the same, and I'll do a lot of testing and let you know. Yeah, it looks just like the Air 3 uh, charging hub. So you've got three batteries, uh, it's got a single USB-C connection on the side, so when you plug this into a charger, you're gonna to wanna to use at least a 65 watt charger, preferably a higher wattage charger, maybe a 100 or 140 watt charger, and find one that's PD or power delivery because this unit is intelligent. The controller inside here is smart, and when you connect it up to a PD capable charger, it'll actually negotiate the voltage and current to quickly, safely charge those batteries. If you don't use a PD charger, the best you're gonna get is five volts and 2.4 amps. That's not a lot of power. It's gonna take forever to charge them. So 65 watt or 100 watt charger, and you'll be in really good shape. And it's just like, and I'll test it, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I am, it's gonna test these in sequence, or I should say charge them in sequence. It doesn't charge all three at the same time. What happens is the controller in the hub talks to the controller in the batteries, and it figures out which of the batteries needs the least amount of charge. It'll fire all the electrons at that battery till it's fully charged, turn it off, check the other two, find the one that needs the least amount of charge out of the other two, charge that one fully, move on to the third one. So it's gonna move through them sequentially and you might be thinking, why does it do that? Well, if you think about it, the battery that needs the least amount of charge is the quickest to charge and you wanna get back up in the air. So I think it was a smart algorithm that they built in there. All right, so there's the hub. So inside the Fly More kit, there's gonna be one battery in the drone. There are two more here, so you get a total of three batteries. I'm not opening the drone yet. All right, so let's start with the, let's start with the controller. Let's take a look at that. And again, you can get this in a couple of different formats. The one I've got here is the Flymore combo, which comes with the RC2 controller, I believe. Yep, RC2. And this is just like the RC2 controller that comes with a few other drones like the Mini 4 Pro and a few others. The thing I like about the, uh, the RC2 controller is it's got the screen built in. And I know there's a lot of debate out there about using the RCN3 controller, which needs your phone or a tablet as your display device. I like a built-in controller because number one, it's really easy to bring this along, spin it up and start flying so it saves you some time. It also eliminates the need to carry cables with you and make sure that your phone's charged. You got the right cable, is the charger, I mean, is the controller charged? So there's a lot more to think about with that, but the advantage with having like an RCN3 is that you can use a larger tablet. But I find most pilots that start out in the hobby think they need a gigantic tablet. They want to put a 15 inch tablet hanging off a controller. You're going to find that it's really hard to see that out in bright sunlight. It gets to be top heavy, even if you use a bracket. So you're going to move to a smaller a screen like this. The ones that I use every day of the week are like an uh, iPad mini, like the smaller iPad mini, which is the largest screen I'll use, or I like the integrated controller like this one. And again, if you're starting to fly, this is a lot easier to use. All right, let's get into the accessories because that's a big bag of stuff here. Let's take a look at what comes in there. I'm sure it's got propellers and a bunch of other things. And of course, it's impossibly hard to see where that opening is. Maybe I should put my glasses on, let's see. All right, I'm gonna have to rip the bag, here we go. <laughs> These bags are made out of like unobtainium here. All right, so we got, a, oh boy, a lot of props. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10, that can't be right. Let's see, two, four, six, Eight. Yeah, there's 10. All right, so there's 10 there, and I'm assuming there's gonna be five of each. You got a left hand and a right hand, or clockwise and counterclockwise. 
keep those with you, keep them in the bag, because when you're flying this, even though it's got crash avoidance built in, it's not gonna see those really, really tiny things. So you may nick a branch sometime, you may land a little funny and catch a blade of grass or a weed. So carry those blades with you, they're gonna get dirty. And when you're when you're flying, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is always check your blades. That's the, that's the one thing I can recommend for new pilots is that the biggest mistake new pilots make is they fly, put the drone away, and don't even look at the props. Always check your props. When you're landing the drone, before you put it away, run your fingers along the edge of all your props to make sure there are no nicks. If there are nicks on the prop, change it. Don't leave it on there. Even though you can fly with it, you could have problems down the road. I carry a couple of alcohol wipes with me because when it's up in the air, you're going to hit bugs, you're going to hit things in the air and dirt and grit and debris. When it's landing, it's going to kick up sand. You want to make sure they're perfectly clean. So an alcohol swab, you can run it along the edge of the prop and clean them up. So there are your props. All right, let's see what we got here. This looks like a bunch of filters, which is unique. I think that's really great. They're including ND filters. So let's get in here and see what this looks like. Oh, nice case. Really nice case. I'm not sure I can get inside of it, but let's see. Come on, Rick, figure it out. Can't be that difficult. Probably should have read the manual. Yep, there we go. I got it open. All right. Ooh, that's really nice. So you're going to get three filters in there, and these snap on the front of the uh, camera. Now, you'll notice there are two sections to them. That's because it's a dual camera system or dual sensor system where it's got a telephoto and it's got a wide angle lens on it. So these lenses or these covers, filters, will uh, actually give you uh, coverage if you're out there in really bright situations or you're flying over water, anything reflective, you'll need an ND filter to knock down on some of that light coming into the lens. All right, let's take a look at the drone. <laughs> I always save this for last. This is like the dessert. I just had a great meal here. Here's my dessert. Oh boy, oh boy, another bag. All right, let's take your time, Rick. Don't drop this one. Let's see here. All right, here we go. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy. Come on, come on out. I'm trying not to drop you. I'm being gentle here. These bags are so, there we go. Oh, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> oh man, give me a second. I got to drink this in. All right. <laughs> so when I say, when I say it's a mid-sized drone, it's pretty big and it's got some heft to it. It's 724 grams or yeah, 724 grams. So it's got a little bit of weight. But the weight's important because when you're flying the drone and the wind kicks up up there at 150, 200 feet in the air, you want to have some mass in the drone because that gives it ballast. It's not going to be buffeted around with the wind. So you want it a little bit heavy, but it's not super, super heavy. All right, so let me open up the props, or the wings, I should say, the arms, and we'll take a look at some of the features on it. Now, if I'm looking at the bottom, it looks fairly similar to the, uh, the Air 3 where it's got two optical sensors, it's got a light, and it's got infrared time of flight sensors as well. Now, these two opticals are crash avoidance coming down, so you won't land it on a tree, hopefully. It's got IR sensors right there, and those are time of flight sensors. So when you get close to the ground, typically under 20 or 15 feet, those kick in, and they're looking for sort of a, a granular pattern on the ground. So those can be a little dangerous if you're flying over water because water doesn't do well with IR. So if you're flying over water or ice or something that's reflective, you want to keep it up above 15 feet just to be safe. All right, so those are there. On the back, you've got two more opticals. These are binocular sensors on the back. On the front, let me open this guy up. And on the front, we've got two binocular sensors. Oh, there's a, there's a sticker someplace. Rick, where is it? Oh, there it is. Let's see if I can get that off. There we go. All right, now what's interesting here is on the front of the unit, we've got the standard binocular sensors. These are similar to the ones that were on the Air 3. But look at this band on the front right there. What do you think that is? Well, I gave you a hint earlier. That's LiDAR. Now, LiDAR is an amazing technology. It's laser, and it's basically sending out a beacon of laser light in front of it that's reflecting back, but it's incredibly accurate. So opticals are good, and they're looking for patterns of solid things to not run into. They're also used with APAS when it's trying to find the hole between solid objects. But that LiDAR on the front gives you incredibly accurate uh, positioning of objects in front of you. It's so good that it can actually read the surface of an object. So it's going to give you a lot of good protection, and they've got it on the front of the drone, and I think that's the perfect place for it, because if you're flying, that's what you're watching, the stuff in front of you, right? Now, you could certainly slide into something either side or, or back into something, but I like the fact that they've added LiDAR. The other big difference you're going to notice, again, on the front of the unit is they've got a bigger sensor. We've got a one-inch sensor now for the wide angle, and you've got a one over 1.3 inch sensor for the telephoto. So you've got both of those sensors up front. They've also increased the field of view. On the Air 3, it was 84 degrees. Here, it's 85 degrees. And they've also increased the aperture from 1.7 to 1.8. So it's a better camera, 14 stops as well for the photography. Um, it's a better camera. It's got a better imaging package inside that processes the details coming off the sensor. So overall, what you've got is a better camera, 
on a better drone with better protections on the front. Uh, about the same flight time, it's 45 minutes roughly on a fully charged battery, and I'll have to test all that, but we all know our mileage is gonna vary there. It's got the same OcuSync 4 technology inside for the connection to your controller. Now, OcuSync 4 will give you 20 kilometers of flight distance, which is unbelievable to me that this robot can fly 20 kilometers away from me and still talk to the controller. And again, I mention this every time, you can't really fly 20 kilometers away because in the United States, we've got a visual line of sight requirement where you gotta keep an eye on the drone when you're flying it. But a couple thousand feet, you can see this guy in the air with a beacon on the top of it. Knowing you've got that 20 kilometer distance means I'm not gonna have to worry about losing a signal when I'm flying around a building or around trees or other obstructions. So if you're new to flying, that's one of the biggest fears of new flyers is that the drone's gonna just break connect with the controller and fly off towards the horizon. Not gonna happen with this drone. You're gonna be in good shape. One other thing that's really nice, the video feed from the drone back to the controller is gonna be 1080p at 60 frames a second. So you're getting a really good image quality from the drone back with minimal latency. And that's really important because if you're flying around obstacles or let's say there's a lighthouse, you're trying to get the perfect shot, you wanna know exactly where that drone is in the air because if you get close to the lighthouse and it takes a couple of milliseconds to see that you're close to the lighthouse because you're watching this, you're gonna be in trouble. So that short latency is important, the quality of the feedback is important, and that's all because they're using OcuSync 4 technology which is proprietary DJI, DJI gear. I'm getting too excited. So when I talk about this company, I know I get giddy because I love technology. And when I look at their technology, it's light years ahead of anything that should be in a consumer's hands. I'll be honest with you. I mean, this drone is so advanced from a technological perspective. It's got artificial intelligence built in for crash, crash avoidance. It's got APAS built in, which if you've seen some of the videos on that, basically it's gonna look for solid objects in an environment and look for the holes between those solid objects. So you could fly this full speed into the woods and it's gonna dodge trees and find the holes it can fit through. It's got artificial intelligence built in for different flight patterns. So it's got multiple flight patterns built in that you can trigger from the remote and send it up and do a drone or a selfie or a rocket or follow you. It's it's just an incredibly sophisticated device. And again, if you're a consumer, you can't go wrong with something like this. It's got everything you could possibly want in a drone. It's the latest release, and I think it's gonna be a phenomenal flyer. And if you're a professional flyer, what more could you want? I mean, okay, maybe a bigger sensor. You got a one inch sensor on the front. It flies 20 kilometers. It flies for 45 minutes. It's got everything you could possibly need to go out there and keep your clients plenty happy. Now, I'm gonna spend more time going through this in more detail, but today I just wanted to get through the basic unboxing and an overview. Again, frame-wise, looks very similar to the Air 3. The big improvements, I believe, are the LiDAR, the bigger sensor, and a few other um, features that they've kind of tweaked. I mentioned the imaging package inside. It's going to give you a little better resolution, the 14 stops for the video guys, or the photo guys, and the filters. So that's pretty much all I had for today. Now, I'm going to charge this thing up as soon as this video is done. Head outside and start flying it because I can't wait to get it up in the air. It's a beautiful time of year. We've got fall colors coming in, and I'm just really excited to see what this thing can do. So hopefully you found this review helpful. Thanks an awful lot for watching, and see you soon.